Hey, hey, okay, so this is a little tutorial to hopefully help you link your mouth shapes to a slider that can then be controlled by an audio file, right? So you'll be able to open and close based on how loud something is. This isn't great for like super precise phonemes, but if you just have open and close mouth shapes, this works terrific. Uh, in fact, let's take a quick look at our uh, mouth shapes here. We have uh, mouth zero. Right, so that's uh, that's closed. Uh, then we have one, two, three, little chin action, and four. So super wide open. Yeah, so those will be our mouth shapes. And we're going to, like I said, link them to a slider. So uh, to get started, let's add a null layer, new a null object. And we're going to rename that to be mouth CTR. L, mouth control. You can name it whatever you want. That's just kind of a handy way to do it right there. I'm going to put it right above our mouth shapes. I'm going to link all of them to it and then it to our sunflower root. That way, if we need to move our character, all our mouths will move with him. Uh, then I'm going to go ahead and hide the unused stuff using that shy button. Now we've just got the things we need to work on. All right, let's select mouth control. Let's add a slider, not a slider, but a slider to it. And let's get that effect open. And now we're going to add an expression to the transparency of each of our mouth shapes. And the goal is, is that whatever this is set to uh, zero or one or two, it will adjust the transparency of these layers in real time. Uh, okay, so the expression that we're going to use is this one. So first, we're establishing a layer number. So each of these five layers, we're going to give a number. And then we're going to change our comp. We're going to change this to be our comp name, which in this case is Sun Sync Tut. And we're going to change our layer to layer name to what we're working on here, which is Mouth CTRL. And then what happens is, is that slider uh, uh, will adjust and... If the slider is set to the number for the layer that we assigned, then it will be 100%. <clears throat> Anything else will be set to zero. So it should be pretty straightforward. And I'll put this in the, uh, what is it, the description down below. Isn't that what they usually do on these things? Okay, cool. So let's pop back in here and we'll select M00 and paste. And it's a little hard to see, so I'm going to grab this, pull it down. And I'm going to name this one, I'm going to number this one zero. And I'm going to go ahead and change our comp name to match what it's set to. So right here, Sun Sync Tut. Double click, select, and paste. And do the same thing with our control. So copy, and we're going to replace that with layer name. And whatever yours is, that's what you can pop in there. We should lose our error now. So as long as this is set to zero, this layer will be at 100%. If it's set to anything else, this layer will go to 0%. So let's put that back there and uh, let's copy this copy. Now we can close that transparency option. Click here to add a, an expression. Let's make this a little bigger and we're going to name this one 25. I'm going to name this one 50. It really threw me because of different numbers, but you can number it whatever you want. It doesn't really matter as long as, uh, that number there matches your keyframe on your slider. We'll talk about that in a second. Paste. Change this one to a 75. Close it. And lastly, this guy right here. And paste. And make it bigger. And this one is going to be 100. Okay, cool. So now we are ready to start adjusting our uh, mouth control. So normally um, what you would do is you would simply adjust your slider to get your different, uh, different mouth shapes on that. Right? So you can set a keyframe here at, at zero. Whoop, let's go back to zero. Set that. You can come over here to two. You can set that to what do we say? We're doing 25. We're doing 50, right? 50 there, 75, and 100. And this totally works. If you just want to, and I'm going to change those to uh, be stepping, stepping, stepping keyframes. Uh, I think I have to click over here on the keyframe. There we go. 
toggle hold keyframe. Yeah. So now as we go through, right, so you could just listen and then adjust those to be whatever. But if it's anything other than those numbers that we assigned in that expression, right, so one, or rather, sorry, 0, 25, 50, 75. It's anything other than that, uh, it will not link. So if we change this here to 62, then everything's 0. So this is a nice function because you can have, like like in this case, we have five primary shapes, right? And we're going to let our audio drive these five primary shapes. But maybe you have some specialty shapes, like, a, like an ooh or a surprised or a sad face that you want to interject. Well, you can also assign those and then manually, manually key them in. Okay, so if you just wanted to go through here and drive all those by hand, you're done. Have a good day. But um, if you'd like to link that then to an audio file, stick around for a few more minutes. I'll try to talk a little faster. Sorry, I'm from Texas. We talk slow here. Um, okay, so let's grab an audio file. Uh, let's go up to here. Yes, get Sorry Pete. Zoom out a little bit. Center this. We'll give ourselves a little bit of runway. Let's preview it. Sorry, Pete. I know we're keying, but... They got this depression on. How I got to do for me and mine. So what we're going to do is we're going to leverage the audio wave here, right? So, so um, the louder it is, the bigger the mouse shape. That's basically what it boils down to. So we're going to right click on that, or we're going to go up to animate, keyframe assistant, convert to audio keyframes. You can also get there, right click, keyframe assistant, convert to audio keyframes, and that'll be on any layer that has audio. That will immediately generate a new layer, and it'll gonna, it's going to give you keyframes on your left channel, your right channel, and a slider for both channels. So as you can see here, this is what we got. So this is very, very helpful for driving those keyframes. Uh, now you'll see that they aren't on 175, 50, and 25, but we're going to force that. So let's go ahead and dump the left and the right channel because we really only need one set of keyframes. And um, then let's go through here and we're gonna just do just that. So I'm gonna select all of my highest points here. Let's get a few of these. Let's get those out of the way. Um, get a couple of these, move them up. All right, so we're gonna make all of these guys right here for now so that our scale, we don't lose our, uh, our keyframes off the top, we are just going to park over one of those keyframes. And we're just going to set those to 10. Yeah. And we'll come back in a minute and we'll force them to 100 so that they match our layers, layer numbers. Okay, then we're going to get all our 75s. Hmm. Feels like we need a little more 75 there. Let's do one there. Uh, maybe this guy, I don't know, how about one of these? Let's see what that looks like. I'll move those up. Park over one of those keyframes so that we can come in here and we'll just type in 7.5. Looks good. Uh, now let's get our 50s. Mm -hmm. Same thing, let's park over a keyframe and we'll set that to 5. And then we got our 25s, all our low guys down here. So we'll scooch that up just a tad park our playhead over a keyframe and we'll change it to 2.5 and then the rest of these right here easy breezy let's just set them to zero park over a keyframe bam we're at zero cool all right so now uh let's separate these into the numbers they need to be 175 50 25 um so select our top ones park over the top of a keyframe go to 100 and you'll see now why I was doing that. So you see we lose our scale goes crazy. So we're going to you, you could just imagine trying to select these other keyframes when they were scaled down so far. 75 and uh, I'm going to have to zoom in a little bit. <laughs> yeah, what did I do? I feel like I've done something wrong here. Why do I feel that way? Ah, uh, there we go. Okay. Now we got, ah, oh, there's our 50s. 50. And last, but certainly not least, 25. 2.5, and we'll go to 25. Okay, cool. Uh, now let's convert these. I think we had already converted these to step frames, did we? I think we did. Toggle, hold keyframe. Uh, let's take a look. 
Nope. All right. So now they're stepped. We're going to go ahead and delete a bunch of these here that we probably don't need. Just feels like less data to keep up with the better. Uh, there we go. And we'll get rid of all of these right here. Cool. All right. Now what we're going to do, switch back to our regular keyframe view, select those, copy, and we can close amplitude. We're kind of done with that. Go down to here to our slider control and paste. Now, if we preview it, we will see our mouth move. Sorry, Pete. I know we're kin, but they got this depression on. How I got to do for me and mine? <laughs> That's all it takes. Uh, Sorry, Pete. I know so, we're kin, but pretty simple. they got this depression on. How so why this is nice, right? So like, got this depression on. on. How I feel like that should be open a little longer right there. Want to hold just those two keyframes, right? So I'm going to grab those and I'm going to change them to be 100. So now. And again, if you had a special mouth, you could insert that. And that's pretty much it. Um, add your control layer. Um, add your slider to it. Add your expression, which again, I'll put down in the um, thing at the bottom, the notes. What is that? Comments, whatever it is. Here, make sure you change your comp name, your layer name. Give your layer a number. Uh, put that uh, expression on all of your mouth shapes. Uh, then generate an audio amplitude layer by right-click. Uh, animate assist and force those keyframes called quantize or posterize those keyframes into those whatever numbers, right? You could have 50 different mouse shapes um, and then copy and paste those keyframes into your slider and you're off to the races. That's it. So uh, let's do another one. Um, I mean, you know how to do it. You don't have to watch the rest of this. Um, so, but I want to do another one just because uh, it's good practice and you, I don't know, maybe, maybe, why not? So let's see, let's start with uh, saving our tutorial. Let's go up here, reveal composition in project. Got, uh, let's go ahead and duplicate this and let's pull in some more audio. Let's pull in some more audio. Command I, uh, Big Dan. I don't believe I've seen you boys around here before. Yeah, let's do that one. That's kind of a fun one. Okay, so I'm going to drop that in. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, nope. I'm going to open the new tutorial. There we go. Then I'm going to rename this guy, and I'm going to call it Big Dan. There we go. How about that? And let's check and see if our expression updated. Did it? It did not. So we're going to have to update our expression on these layers. Not a big deal. Uh, let's come up here and get our the name of our comp. Come down here, paste, and we'll do that for our five layers. So this could be a little tedious if you had a bunch of mouse shapes, but it's not that bad uh, with five. Paste. Oh, I wish that would keep the size after you resize it, but it doesn't. There's probably a shortcut key. If you know what that is, please tell me. <laughs> uh, I've been using After Effects for more than a decade. I'm still learning shortcuts all the time. And let's see. T for transparency. Open that expression. Open that up. And paste. Okay, cool. All right, let's make sure that's... Sorry, Pete. I know we're kin, but... Okay, cool. Still working. All right, so we're going to go ahead and dump Pete. We're going to come back here. We're going to dump our um, slider things. We're going to dump our amplitude. We're going to drop our new audio in at the top. And ooh, that's a lot longer. Let's see. How long is it? How long is Big Dan? 19. So let's make our comp 20 seconds. Command K. And... Let's see, let's go down to 20 seconds. Minus, minus, minus. Let me unshy my layers, select them all, including the one that's locked. Come down here to 20 and we'll extend that all the way. Okay, cool. Uh, let's go ahead and reshy those. 
I'm going to center our audio just a little bit, right click, go down to keyframe assistant, which is off the screen. So I'll go up here, animate keyframe assistant, convert audio to keyframes. U to expose, dump the left and the right. Again, doesn't matter which one you use, they're all the same. I'm sure some really high fidelity audio, they're not, but on the stuff that I ripped, it is. Okay, cool. So that's what our audio looks like. So now let's do the same thing. We're going to uh, select some for 10, 7.5, 5, and 2.5. And then we'll expand those later to be uh, match our layer names. Ooh. Zippity doo dah. Uh, yep. Got to park that playhead over the top. We'll set that to 10. Set that to 10. Uh, let's see. It's got our 75s now. It's a lot kind of down here jumbled up. So let's just see how that looks. Let's grab that one and that one. This one. Park over the top one. Change that to 7.5. Uh, now we're going to do our 50. So I'm just going to kind of split the rest of these in half. And uh, move those up. Scale down a little bit. Park over the top of a one of those keyframes. So that when I change this to 5, oops, almost change it to 50. It will uh, move them all. And then uh, last but not least, let's grab our 25th percentile. Uh, I got a few more than I bargained for. Let me dump that. Selection, try again. There we go. Again, park over one of those keyframes, set it to 2.5. And then the rest of ours, hmm, seems like maybe I should have more zeros in there. But you know what? Let's just see what happens. And watch me fail in real time. Okay, cool. Uh, let's jump out of our graph editor and convert these to... What do you call it? What do you call those? What are they called? They're called hold keyframes. Yes. Okay. Hold keyframes. Um, then let's take all of these and scale up. Oh, that's, yeah, I need to do that instead of typing it in. Um, sometimes I'll just like change the 100s and then everything else will be stuck at the bottom. Uh, all right. So that's going to be 100. These are going to be. 75. These are going to be 50. There's a lot of 50 keyframes. Making sure I'm parked over the top. I feel like I got something wrong. Oh, the two and a halfs didn't move. So two. Yeah. So this is the problem with the scale. When it gets crazy, it gets hard to select things. So let me turn that off and zoom in. Can I zoom in? Will you let me zoom in? Plus, oh, it's not what I want. Oh, yeah. It's, eh, it looks like maybe I do not. Uh, I think I have some of the zeros selected because our selection goes all the way down. Am I crazy? Uh, let's just go for it. What could? Okay. Minus, minus, minus. Turn auto zoom back on. 25. Okay, cool. Park our playhead right there and change that to 25. Cool. Now we have our settings in place. Let's go back to the standard keyframe viewer, select all of those keyframes, move our playhead to zero, copy, close that, come down to our slider and paste and watch the magic. I don't believe I've seen you boys around here before. Allow me to introduce myself. Name of Daniel Teague, known in these precincts as Big Dan Teague. All of those who are pressed for time, Big Dan, toot court. The one thing you don't want is air in the conversation. Bada bing, bada bang. I don't believe I've seen you boys around here. So. For me, I think I would definitely do some special mouse shapes. But Big Dan would really go crazy. Of course, you know. Adding some character animation definitely also would help that. But anyway, that's the way you do it. Uh, nice little uh, nice little tutorial there on um, connecting your mouse shapes to audio amplitude based on an audio layer and driven, driving it with uh, keyframes and a slider. Enjoy. Uh, let me know if there's some way I can improve this, if I've gotten something wrong, um, or if I've confused you in any way. Ciao, ciao for now.